My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I'd like to start off by thanking all 2,622 subscribers in over 80 countries globally. If you believe in transferring knowledge to those who need it most, please click subscribe. Your user data will not be transferred to anyone outside of Aspen Now without your consent. Hello, everyone. Well, today we're going to be going over five on submit client scripts that you should have in your arsenal as a developer. And if you're just getting started with ServiceNow, these are probably going to be pretty helpful for you because these are some of the um, client scripts uh, that I've seen used in the past in order to address you know, certain customer requirements that you get um, on the daily when you're doing development of applications within the ServiceNow platform. Um, apologies for not posting any videos um, f for, I don't know, a couple of weeks now. I've just had a, a lot of stuff going on. Um, I'm a doggy daddy now, so I have a, a couple of puppies um, as of Friday, so a couple of days ago. So I've been very busy with that too. And um, yeah, let's just take it away and take a look at this form here. Um, this is an application called Shelby TS. You'll see you're, we're in a scoped app. Um, if you haven't dealt with scoped apps, no big deal. You can use these client scripts in a domain, or excuse me, a domain separate environment also, but also in scoped apps. Um, and I'm gonna demonstrate each one. So we have about five, five or six here um, that I've seen used in the past to address certain requirements. So the first one um, centers around, and if you're doing like catalog, this will probably be helpful. So you might have a scenario where you have like box one right here, which is an integer field and then box two, which is just a checkbox. And this one might be something like, I don't know, um, how many power cords you need or something like this. And this is, will be like, do you need a laptop? So meaning that one would be the amount that, you know, the maximum amount. And you're probably asking like, well, why wouldn't you just make it an integer and a choice field or whatever? Um, the, the bottom line or the, the main answer is this, because the customer wants it this way. So if you face that on the daily, um, like I do sometimes, hey, no big deal. Um, so let's just take a look at, at this one right here. I'm going to hit zero in this box right here in box one. And I'm going to hit save and it's going to give me this error here, right? So you need to add a number to box one or you need to check box two, right? So you need to do one or the other. So I'm just going to hit save and it'll go ahead and submit. So we have here under the hood what it looks like. So notice here our type is on submit, which means our script needs, starts, needs to start with function on submit. And then yeah, I think I originally had like three there, but I figured if I'm just gonna show you a true false and an integer, I think you know two is fine. Um, so you can see the way we would set this up basically here we're saying if, and then remember G underscore form, right? So remember when we're dealing with client scripts, what are we talking about? What happens in the form action? So, and, and sometimes it's debatable whether you want to use a, like an on submit client script or a lot of times people will use a business rule um, instead. And, and it's just a matter of preference. And, um, you know, if you want this to be just client side, remember client side stuff isn't going to be as heavy as the business rules. Business rule will um, add that server logic, the back end to it, right? So um, going back to this, we have our G underscore form. We're getting the value of box one, and we're saying if it's zero and this one, box two, which is a true false, is false, then we're gonna kick out this error message right here. And then we have this return false. So um, feel free to copy that down if you like. Um, if you have trouble copying it down, you can contact me. Um, and I'll be more than happy to send you a copy of it. So then our second one is going to be just a simple copying from one field to another. Now, don't ask me why they wanted this. I can't remember it was so far back, but let's just put a number like 200. We're gonna click save and we're gonna see our copies over into another field. And I really can't remember if this field was hidden on the form or if there was an ACL locking it down or um, something where you know like the, there was one group that need to see this one or enter things here then this one saw this um but anyway if you want to do it using an on submit client script that's how you would do it um also one thing it'll help you with like if you're just getting started um you'll be able to see how this is set up so all we're saying here is g underscore form and then we're saying set value right 
and we're setting the value of sold amount with this gform.get value amount at sale. Now keep in mind that these are integer fields. So if you were gonna do this with um, uh, like reference fields, it would be set up a little bit differently. And um, maybe I'll do that in the future. Okay, so then our third one, we're gonna say we want our begin date to be before the end date. Now, if, if you're doing catalog, um, it's kind of like with this one, right? You might have two dates here on your front end where the user has to say, you know, I need this to begin here, or like a change request, like it needs to start here and then it's gonna end here. So then we'll, we're just gonna test it. We're gonna put in the 24th here and then we're gonna put in the end date before in the past, right? So before the 24th and we're gonna watch it kick out an error. So we'll see here, end date must be, must be after begin date. And let's go ahead and take a look at, I think it was called like validate begin end date, something like that. So what do we have here? Um, we have our vari we have three variables here, right? So we have begin one, end one, and we're getting the value of begin, then getting the value of end. Then we're saying with this format here, we're gonna use the daytime format the user, and then we're gonna say, okay, if they're not filled in, no big deal. And then we're gonna say, okay, here's the deal. Boom, boom, um, with, be with these new variables, right? We have begin two, and then we're gonna get the day from format, begin one, and then a format, and then end two. Um, but here's where it's determining right here, this if statement. So remember this, you know, like begin, is before end that's fine right if it's less than return true else then we're going to kick out this error message here right and then we have our return false right there so a little bit to digest there um but no big deal um again if you if you need a copy of something like this um, this is something we face on the daily as developers so um, you probably have seen this before but i just want to show you um, how you would set that up now remember that um, these are date time fields so if we look at this form right here we have date and time whereas down here we just have the date so we're going to see a little bit of a different construct here in a second so the next thing we're going to have here is low bid high bid so let's just pretend it's an auction like on ebay or something and we bid here like a um, hundred and then let's say right here someone meant to put in 110 but in fact they put in um excuse me someone meant to put in 1100 um or 110 excuse me and they put in 11 for the high bid and then they click save now we're going to get two error messages here right so one's telling us low bid needs to be higher than the high bid and then the high bid needs to be lower okay fine we got it two error messages maybe a little excessive but no big deal so let's just go ahead and see how this one was set up so we're going to have here our on submit and then we have our variable low bid g form get value again for the low bid high bid same thing okay so then we're saying if they're not you know if there's nothing going on with them or nothing in those um, fields fine whatever and then we're gonna say here, get decimal value of low bid, right? It's for these, this new variable called low, and then high, get the decimal value of high. And then it almost looks like the previous one that we looked at. So if low um, is less than high, that's fine. If not, then we're gonna see this G form show field message. So that's why it's popping up underneath the field. So we can actually take it to that field. And if you have a long form, Sometimes you'll see this G form uh, show field message like in catalog. Um, I've seen that a lot where the form is just, you know, it's a little bit longer than the screen. They want to take them to the exact fields um, on a, on submit. That's especially helpful because if they went through the entire process of going down that form, you want to kind of bring them to that one field. So um, I can tell you like filling out um, like a, a federal government clearance form, you know, it's kind of a massive amount of questions. So we might want to use this. And last I checked that this show field message, you can't use it like in a tab, but you can use it on the main section, if you will, or something that, you know, sometimes we'll refer to as like the header section. So if you had tabs down here, um, then it, it won't go down there. Um, and don't, and I don't want to confuse you guys, like tabs are different than related lists. So those are two different things. So if you're in tabs, it's not going to bring it down there. Um, that won't navigate. So what I would do is kind of like bring it as low as it could go if it's in a tab um, and then show the field message there. 
Okay, so then we got here start date, end date, and uh, let me just go ahead and correct this, make it 110, hit save. And then our end, oh, did I not fix that? All right, let's, let's make this the 14th then, shall we? It's kicking out errors all over the place, great. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing with this start date, end date. We'll hit save. All right, so end date must be after start date. So let's look at the construct of this one. Remember, this isn't a date time field. These are, these are just strict dates. So here, see how much simpler it looks. So on submit, and remember all these, the type on submit. So we're getting our form value, um, or excuse me, we're doing G form, get value, end date. And then we're saying here, if end date, is less than start date then we're going to clear the message and we're going to add this error message right here and then on top of it i saw that you know this one had this g form get label of end date um which was pretty cool and then you know like end date must be after so um i really haven't seen this one in a while with the g form get label of so i thought that was kind of cool to include and show you guys so and then last lastly let's say you have um people in here like sometimes they want to do like the, the customer really wants like a confirm on like update or let's just pretend this this you know ui action was like a custom one you made so when they click update here um and let me first make sure that i change this to 14 so it allows me to do that when i click update if you want to have your own message that pops up are you sure you want to update the record you can do something like this. So yeah, this is actually the sixth one, um, I guess that we're doing today. Um, you'll see here function on submit and then gform.getActionName, name, right? So the UI actions name is uh, sysverb underscore update. You know, if you were gonna create a custom one, whatever the custom one's name is right here. And then this variable message is gonna be a get message. And then that message that you just saw that showed up on the screen and then we have this return and then confirm message right so um, that's the construct of this one how that that script is set up so just to review uh, here's our five uh, on submit client scripts that we reviewed today so we had our checkbox um, I guess this is a check spot checkbox slash integer um, or true false validation copy field we had our daytime field validation we had our low versus high number validation our date field validation um, let me just space that out and then as a bonus I showed you that confirm on submit and that's it for today. If you feel like you learned something, go ahead and click like. Um, if you need a copy of any of these, just go ahead and feel free to ping me or just submit a comment in the video um, down below. My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we've just unlocked the power to service now.